started this uh, doing imprint uh, back in 2019. And it used to be that someone would host their space and we would print out physical images and to tape onto like, you know, the, the space and have like a temporary gallery where you talk about photos. And that was fun, you know, until like COVID started. And so that kind of threw the whole idea out the window. <laughs> like it that sounds really, sweet. Yeah, like it was very like intimate and it, it like brought out a lot of good conversation. Um, and, you know, there was this moment before everyone started talking where everyone had all their pictures up and people were just walking out of the room. Just oh. like getting, taking it all in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, before. So hopefully we can have that again, maybe next year when it's safe to do so. Yeah, sure. How, how often you guys like do a meetup or photo critics? Uh, I, for, I mean, like once a month. Yeah, this was, I haven't done one in a while. So this is the first one in months. So 2020 has been a weird year. Yeah. I think I shoot like a lot of people in the group because I do a lot of faces. I do a lot of uh, portraits and events and, uh, and a little bit of news, but not, not really that much news stuff. Um, I really stay away from the uh, the protest type stuff and all that is for just uh, the commercial business side. So the one uh, rule that I had put on myself earlier, and then I broke it just now adding folders to the folder, was that uh, with the imprint group, I was going to just show things that were actually printed and then show them digitally as well. Um, so the f first thing is I've got my, this is my, my look book that I bring to clients and uh, the two things I have in here from not most of these aren't from 2020 so that was part of the problem but this is from an event at the Hirshhorn so this is uh, a, a movie screening at the Hirshhorn and now I'll actually I'll share the actual photos with you all so you can see them and critique them and, and tell me what you think um, And just FYI, in the top right, if you're on gallery view, I suggest sw switching to speaker view so you can see the photos uh, better. Yeah, and, and uh, I have to allow uh, participants. I'm not allowed to share. Oh, um, oh. yeah, give me a second. I got it. Got it, okay. Try it again, David. Cool. Like I said, these are, these are uh, not a big deal. This is a uh, trying to remember the guy's name. I think it's Walker. It's probably on the other photo, but you know this isn't a big art thing. This is just uh, photos in an in an event, um, and uh, and so there's a lot of pressure to get the right thing in in one or two shots. Uh, so this is a. Uh, I think I had uh, two flash set up on remote here and kind of quickly have to set up and grab some banquet worker real quick to stand in front of it and test it and see what it looks like and then move on. Um, so again, nothing special there. And then see if I can bring up a better one. So you all should let's see. I should actually just share the entire computer because I, there we go. There we go. You guys can see my whole screen now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is the event that, this is the photo I'm more proud of because, so I'm going into the Hirshhorn and the, the big part of when doing like an event like this is kind of knowing the space and knowing where you can be. And thankfully I had actually been to an event in this room just a couple of weeks beforehand to see David Burnett, the amazing documentary photographer, do a presentation from the same spot. So I was pretty familiar with what could be done there. And uh, what worked out well is the, um, the photo in the background, uh, kind of framing the participants in the conversation the same. So that's what I was going for here to kind of to kind of match their head distance and, uh, and kind of frame everything all in one big wide shot. And then the last photo from this group was where I wanted to do something artsy. Because, uh, so this is kind of a reverse of what you just saw. 
and again, same, same, same place, same thing, but, uh, but now you're seeing it through some glass partitions uh, in the room and kind of seeing the audience at the same time with some silhouettes. So that was, that was an event thing. Um, because uh, the, the other thing I wanted to share was from, we all got locked in real quick when this whole COVID thing hit. So we all started, a lot of people started doing the Zoom shoots. So I wanted to show two examples of that. And of course, when you're doing Zoom shoots, now the person on the other end is using their computer or their um, phone to be to actually capture. So it's a real interesting conversation about who is actually the photographer. Is it the person directing or is it the person holding the camera? Um, so this was just a collaboration uh, with uh, the local model, Nikki. And one of the things I did was I did a collage because the quality is so bad when you're using a device like Zoom or the phone was that I used, I did a collage and mixed them all together to make one image rather than just taking one of these, which was too small and too awful to even use. And so this involved, you know, like kind of staging where to stand, um, what outfits to put together and all that, and then taking that into Lightroom and Photoshop and getting rid of, you know, plugs on the wall, getting rid of other paintings that you didn't want in the shot, getting rid of, you know, things that you didn't want and then balancing as much as possible to kind of make it have a continuous story and continuous look. Um, so that was uh, like my one of two experiments with the whole Zoom shoot thing. So that was very COVID centric. So, so kind of these are kind of moving in order. So the first one was pre-COVID. That was like a January event. This is like right in the middle of the lockdown when everyone was washing their groceries. Um, and so, and so this next one is is from the summer. Share that. And this will be the last the last thing I share. Um, so the last one is from the summer, and this was. When we had kind of figured out what you needed to do to stay safe. So this is in a gym that had limited number of people allowed in it. Everyone who's behind the scenes is wearing a mask and, and staying distanced and things like that. But this is a, this is a client uh, shoot where a lot of freedom because the client was really all about collaborating and didn't ha did, did have, a, we did have a, um, we had a, 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 a location director and an artistic director who was kind of directing posing and fitness looks, whereas I was handling the color and the lighting and everything. So for this one, I went strong on the pink to kind of highlight the blue of her outfit. Um, there's barely anything taken out of this photo, like from the floor or marks or anything. This is kind of just almost raw out of the camera. There may be like a little a little bit of shopping here and there, but this is pretty much raw. Um, and so that's why I went wider and left my light stand in the shot and the, uh, the backlight and things like that. Um, and then the last one, same shoot, same thing that uh, here we were in, in mid pandemic this summer. Um, and then this one, same gym, we're in a corner of the gym, found some of those, you know, those CrossFit tires or whatever people who are fit, you call them, and uh, rolled them over. And they worked really well with the black wall, with the black tires, with the black outfit, and then just like a little blue tone. Um, this is, again, same lights that were in the other one, just, just two lights. Um, there's, a, there's a backlight to the back and right side, and then there's the front fill over on the right, uh, all, all strobes going off. So... Those are the three sets that kind of show the three sections of the year. And now I'll probably be going back to some Zooms in winter now. And uh, yeah. That's nice, man. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, I guess we can open up to the floor to questions, comments, and critiques now for a bit. If anyone has anything. Yeah, and I'll say it just out of the blue critique away i uh there's no feelings or emotions so feel free to mm -hmm. make it positive go for it i i got a um suggestions um in one of your the the gym shots that um then the model doing that 
and the dumbbell at the back of her shoulder. So I think I found the yellow, the, the yellow column in the mid, um, on, on the right hand side is a little bit like, maybe you should, should tone down the color because since you want to make it all uh, the pink and the blue, which is a very beautiful color together and very complement each other. But then there's an orange column there. It's sort of like white orange color. Yeah, it's sort of like, and it's bright color. So if let's say you tone down that saturations or the brightness a little bit on that column, I think that pictures were even more powerful. Oh, no, that's great. That's hey, David, great. Can, you, uh, can you share the picture? I just want to see that as a reference. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to try to make it my background. So I can point to things. Like, where did I put it? But you'll be in the middle. That's and that's the part he's talking about. <laughs> I won't. I won't be that clever and make it my background. Here we go. I will, uh, I'll actually share it again. There we go. So this one. Yeah. Oh, the yellow beam. Right yeah, the structure. beam. The column. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying you should I should, I should have grabbed the yellow from there and brought it down a little bit. Yeah, I I think I think that will will make that um, distractions go away. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Yeah, there's a yellow these two beams. There's, there's another thing here too. Yeah, I th that I think on the left is not so obvious on the yeah that that two column those two beam is actually very. Two beam is very obvious, but this this one you're saying doesn't doesn't take it away. It doesn't from... it doesn't really catch me just now, but that two yellow is definitely stand out. Gotcha. Yeah, I feel like um, there's like two strong uh, color tones going in this picture. Even if you do actually like include the beams in the picture by any chance, it's like a whole solid different color. It's like blue, pink, and then yellow. So it's like if you brought up the brightness just a bit to make it pop, maybe that's also mm -hmm. one one thing, another thing to actually incorporate. Yeah. That was that will make it seems like it's there or it's planned on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I I think I think you're all correct. And then also if it was more of an engaged shoot, maybe even lighting all those yellow poles on purpose would be another thing you, that could have been done. So uh, you, but you could always do that in a uh, post, right? Light in like room, you could actually just bring that uh, the yellows up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, this is a wall file. You can uh, change the color of the beams. <laughs> yeah. Make them all purple. <laughs> <laughs> if I, get really, I really like the uh, the lines in the middle, kind of leading toward her head. I just noticed that, but I think it was yeah, kind it's of... Yeah, a very leading lines kind of thing. Yeah it, yeah, it was definitely attracting my attention to her face mm -hmm. without me really thinking about it, I think. Yeah, the space... What would have been perfect if she was a bit more just a bit, in yeah. place, like in mm -hmm. the center. In the middle. That would be just perfect, but it's a nice placement, really. I was going to say, if it was like, uh, if you had multiple other multiple shots of this um, kind of like session, uh, I'd like to see more like dynamic shots where you shoot maybe from a different angle, like from the ground up mm -hmm. um, and to utilize kind of like the, the light fixtures more because they, they seem to be very strong leading lines. So um, like play with different angles. Uh, that'd be cool. That'd be yeah, no, hundred percent. You guys are all, you guys are all in my head at the shoot. I just wasn't prepared to show all those. <laughs> so I'm like, like scrambling real quick. I'm like, I can show you real quick. And I, again, I don't take up too much time. I'll just show you one more, um, less of a behind the scenes style one. There we go. Oh, okay. cool. Mm -hmm. this was, cool. This, um, was this you and the mo just the model or were there like other people involved in the shoot? Um, makeup, art direction and me shooting. So me t on the technical side, Art direction was a was a personal trainer who was working with her, and then uh, the makeup artist was a, a mutual that that uh, helped to book the shoot. What did the art direction person do? So helping to pick outfits that was going to be worn and, and how she was putting um, them together because we did about five different outfits, um, and then also helping with posing, which I knew know nothing about. I'm not I'm not a fitness person at all. So she was helping her to get the right 
uh, pose that you know shows the right muscle in the right place. As you can see, everything's ripping and 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 form factor and all that. Is it for a particular message they try to uh, showcase through these photos? I yeah, mean, it's, it's a it's a group of personal trainers, so is that that type of thing? Okay, from her facial impact, uh, her facial is like very serious, very moody tone. So I just wonder, it's like, what what? Yeah, how how they want to use that photos for, and how that fit into their concept? It's very interesting look, which I like. So that I try to understand a little bit more about the concept behind. Yeah, it's it's very much like showing off this person's uh, strength and training, and you know, kind of showing off that style, strength, training, lifestyle, and what you can build yourself into by doing what she does, that sort of thing. And it, and it is, you know, when you're in there, it is. I mean, they have fun, but it's also it is intense. So I think that's also where we're going with all this. And it's also, I, I didn't do like a whole lot of like, like Photoshop and softening because this, this is wants to be real. This wants to be, you know, if, if there's a, if there's a jagged point in your body, you want to show it off. Really cool. I really like the, I uh, take the whole neon colors thing. Yeah. I was also going to say that in this photo and in the previous one, even though there's the orange uh, bars in the background, like her hair kind of complements that a little bit especially how like it drops down as a single stream almost like a pillar itself i think it stood out a little bit more in the previous photo but yeah. i like how that becomes like an obvious um or not even obvious but like uh, a focal point in in her posture and how she's being displayed here especially in comparison to this orange in the background i feel like it matches well yeah th this one feel more balanced because you see the yellow at both sides of the photo. I think that helps to frame that, that shot as well. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I didn't even notice that. Um, but yeah. It feels like anything we actually had in comments about the previous picture, it's all fixed here. So <laughs> it's definitely taken from a lower angle. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 knew, I knew you had other photos um, from the shot for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. This, this was more. The one on the right is more like a love letter to photography because I, I love lights and keeping the light in the shot, keeping the C stand in the shot is like me just nerding out. And more on the <laughs> left is more like what we were actually going for. So yeah, no, you, you're all correct. So, Did you have a light on the side, on the right side with like a pink filter on it or something? Yeah, so, I, this, I, so this right here, can you, you can see my mouse, right? You guys see that? No. 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 All right, let oh, me... do, you have two, do you have two pictures pulled up right now? You have two pictures. Oh, there. I think we only see one. Oh, shoot. Okay. No, we now see it. Your, uh, oh, no, it's gone. You see your mouse, yeah. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me uh, share it differently. Sorry about that. I was just sharing the app and not the desktop. There we go. Now we can. Yeah. Okay. So there is, there is the backlight here is a strobe with a pink little gel on it. Mm. And then... The one up front, I think, is also a strobe, and I think I gelled them both pink. And actually, um, I'll stop sharing. Oh, <laughs> guys, uh, hold on. <laughs> these are these are great, and I got them recommended by a friend of mine. They're uh, this little rogue. rogue. What are they called? Rogue lighting filters, and they are just a little packet of all these little blue gels to go on your strobes and it's just an um, it's just a rubber band and so you just literally take this over a strobe and put this rubber band on it and pop it and then boom color change that's nifty yeah yeah and exactly. i this is this is the real one that came with it and then like i always like save all the like bananas you know like uh bananas and organically grown fruit that come with these umbrella uh, <laughs> These rubber bands, I always save those just so I have extra in the pack. Yeah. Anyway, I think I'm taking up too much time. <laughs> Someone else. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I was going to make a comment about uh, showing those pink uh, strobes in the photograph. I found it to be a little bit maybe like distracting um, just to have the actual circle of the strobe. Um, I was like in the second photo with her, like sitting with the bar behind her. 
uh, there was like that um, kind of like pinkish cash uh, cast in like the upper right corner of the picture. Um, like I could, it could be, I think it would be less distracting um, if that gets cut out. So you're saying like here, this little area, you're seeing, you're seeing. The yeah, area. I don't, I don't mind the bottom, like it being cast on the floor per se, like the upper right, it looked kind of distracting for gotcha. me. Um, that's my it's, personal. Yeah, tight, tighter. Shot. A little bit, yeah. You might need to tighten, uh, tighten the shot, like crop a bit more. But that, but I think that, that that's just a matter, matter of maybe like, like, like it could, it could serve you better. better. Maybe, maybe like when you're shooting, shooting um, like positioning on the light, light on the tripod, tripod, tripod as well. As well. Uh, your mic kind of went uh, haywire. Robo. <laughs> I thought it was my connection. It's like, oh, sheesh, my connection is pretty bad. Oh, Ung sounds like a, a robot. That's it. Oh, really? Yeah, well. Just I kind of, I kind of understood what you said. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did <laughs> Is robot. it better now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, you don't mind showing the collage, right? Or like, <laughs> do you want us to move on? I don't know. Because, because I really liked your collage picture more than anything you you showed, really. And I, like, I really liked the fact that you were experimenting there. With four oh, photos. I pre appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I've wasted too much time, or not wasted too much time. I feel. Like <laughs> Someone else got to share. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I agree. I, I really like the clash too. I think yeah, me too. my favorite out of them, just conceptually, it was a neat idea. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And yeah, I hadn't I hadn't heard about that before actually until you just mentioned it. I didn't know I didn't yeah. know those things. Yeah. Now there's some people who are doing it really cool, like really artsy. Like I've seen some people who are they'll have someone on their phone and they're holding it, the phone in their hand and then they're making the phone a part of the scene that the person's in and they're shooting that with the DSLR and there's a lot huh. of ways people are doing. Cool. <laughs> I know, um, I, I think on an earlier call, like uh, back in May, I, I think we were talking with Russ about it, David. He was showing a lot of his um, kind of like pictures that were shot remotely. I think that was really cool too. Good, good, cool idea. Did you find that like interacting with the subject was easier um, when you were doing it remotely versus when you were doing it in person? Or like, did you notice any difference? Uh, definitely more difficult remotely. Um, okay. You know, it's that Zoom world where your voice turns to a robot or you lose a connection or, you know, they can't, they, one of the things I wanted to do was flip the camera around so that I get the higher resolution. And so as soon as I want the higher resolution, they can no longer see themselves. So then how am I describing to them how to balance a phone against a chair where there's no tripod? And you know, like put, what are you doing? You're, okay, put a book behind it. And then what are they gonna do? Are they gonna count down? And then uh, some people can program their, like my, my phone, I can say the word capture and it takes mm -hmm. a picture. It's not everyone's phone can do that. So it's like, you know, are you going to set it on a timer, you know, that sort of thing, or am I going to just screenshot? So we, we started on timers, and then eventually I just started screenshotting. Um, mm. So it's kind of a, a good tech tech uh, thing to go through. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. So I'll start with this one. So I should preface this by saying, so this was the first year I basically tried to take candid pictures of random people, just strangers. Um, so like since I picked up a camera, it was like essentially just shooting landscapes, um, like infrared landscapes for the most part and just trying to avoid people as much as humanly possible. Um, and then I don't know what happened this year for um, the, you know one of a thousand reasons I just started taking pictures of strangers. Um, and so these were kind of the first attempts at it. Um, so this was on, I think, 13th Street, right in front of the Washington Post. Um, and this was just a guy sleeping. Um, I tried to kind of compose uh, so that his head was kind of along this triangle here. Um, I don't know if a tighter crop 
might have kind of helped out in this, but basically the, the idea was to get, a, get, get his attention here with some kind of lines coming this way. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of the first foray into that. And then I wonder if I click side. Yeah, so then I started trying to get more and more people into the shots, um, just as a way to make things harder. Um, and it, it definitely was a lot harder to do this. Um, and so this, these are kind of the next attempts at trying to get more people in, um, but still kind of uh, trying to use some of the like composition techniques that I knew from landscaping and like, or landscape, <laughs> landscape photography, uh, and kind of like a rule of thirds, trying to like have balance on both sides and that kind of thing. Um, still trying to implement that, but trying to increase the level of complexity a little bit. Um, this one, this is a family of unmasked people, like in, I think it was October, like maybe the weekend before the election. Um, but yeah, same, same idea here. I was starting to experiment with like unbalanced images a little bit. Um, I really like how they all started looking into the camera. The funny part was after this shot, they all started laughing because they, they realized I had just taken a picture of them. Um, but in the shot, this is this is a great, I love these faces, this one especially. <laughs> uh, okay, and then this one, just again, I, we were out in, uh, uh, I think this was still in Virginia. Um, I forget the name of this, hump, Humpback Rock or hump, Humpback something. Um, anyway, it's, it's a popular place. Um, and I kind of, I, I was dabbling with taking, again, the sort of landscape stuff that I knew how to do without any, any, any humans in it or anything. And then I thought it'd be funny to see how many people I could get into the shot while somehow maintaining any kind of structure. Uh, so this was that. I especially like this guy all the way up here, <laughs> Captain America. Uh, this was uh, the day, so this was, the, yeah, the day they announced Biden had won. Um, so what, a week, week after the election? After the, the, the like, Saturday of something like that. Um, this is a guy dancing, again, just trying to see how many people I can get into a shot while still trying to preserve some attention going here. Um, and then finally, this one was from September. This one was probably, so I, when I was walking, I kind of tried to position myself right in the middle um, as their attention was kind of like going toward me, like toward like straight behind me. Um, and the idea here was to get as many faces in the shot as possible, all kind of staring toward me while somehow preserving a, a flow of like going through them. I don't know if this works in terms of but like your attention, if you kind of start here and go around this way, um, if you get lost somewhere in here. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Uh, that's all I got for these, just these six. I'm really, I'm wild, really wild the first one that really the, the gentleman on the ground, like, I just think that's a, that's a amazing photo. Um, it completely, You're talking about this one? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it completely just shows a world in one shot with one person. Cool, Very thank cool. you. Yeah. Thanks. I really liked how you employed all these uh, vantage points that are not like, you know, straightforward, like, uh, uh, like what's the word, like, uh, you know, straight, mm -hmm. like, and it, it works really well, in my opinion, for the mountain one. Um, I like, like, like just seeing like the horizon and like, it adds this sense of like height that I think really helps this photo a lot. And yeah, it's probably my favorite one of the ones you showed. Oh, cool. I agree with Andres. Uh, I, I see like a common thread throughout all your photos and that you pick a subject uh, you, you, that's usually in focus and that subject is like straightened like on a, like a 90 degree angle oh, fun, yeah. <laughs> everything else is kind of like um kind of like um un like slightly unstraightened and i kind mm -hmm. of like that style um that you bring to uh, these photographs 
I, I would have to compliment you on your bravery for like getting close to people, especially for someone coming from landscape. Yeah. Uh, very bold. Yeah, I shocker. still struggle with that. <laughs> I still struggle with that. Um, if you can go to your first image, yeah. uh, I, I'd like to make a comment about the man. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, seeing this image. One thing I would like is maybe to shift the frame a little bit to the left so I can get mm -hmm. like the entirety of his uh, like two boots. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah, and, and so it shows more of like, it seems like his his shoes are pointed, uh, creates like kind of like the way they're tilted. It forms like kind of like an invisible diagonal line um, that works really well with the rest of the image. Uh, and I would, oh, wow. I, I think the right side of the image has a lot of like um, empty space that could be kind of like shifted more to the left. It'd, it'd be better served if it was like, um, there was more detail to the left. Gotcha. Um, well, well, this is a very strong image. Um, I would like to see my personal preference more uh, uh, dynamic tones and more contrast. Mm -hmm. uh, seems a little bit kind of like uh, dull to me, but uh, overall, it's a good, great image. Cool. Yeah, I think on your point, Hung, that there's a lot of empty space on the right hand side here. And I, Part of me like wants to agree with that. The other part is like, I kind of like the context that it brings too. That he, like with the space and environment that he's choosing to sleep in. Um, I feel like it, it's painting some sort of picture of where he's at and like what kind of state this environment's in, which I think to further your point, I actually would want to feel that a little bit more um, rather than get like more of a focus on him. Like it's neat to see the background of like, the building while there's like, he's surrounded by a fence and he's he's resting. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I would approach this without knowing where he is, but I think I would want the environment itself to be a bigger role in, in where he's sleeping and what he's being surrounded by. Cause it looks kind of desolate. It looks, looks run down. Um, mm -hmm which I think is an important aspect of this photo. Cool, would, yeah, that, that makes sense. I would also say if you leave it as it is, you could crop like four pixels off the right side because there's one little sliver of white um, before it gets dark, right where that building is. You see where that building's doorway is? Not up here. Yeah, so yeah. on the right side, there's like two, like two pixels literally of white sliver that mm -hmm. I would get rid of, but I mean, if you're leaving it just as it is, I think that one little thing is probably a little distracting, but the, but like I said, overall, I did like your triangle, and I, I think this would be an amazing yeah. large print, because seeing this large would be very interesting to see. Cool. This works really well as a square aspect ratio. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I wanted to talk about the last photo, the one with the people that you were shooting in. in front of oh, this guy. Yeah. yeah, I really liked it. Um, I like um, like their uh, expressions. Like it almost seems kind of culty, or mm -hmm. like cult-like. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you where this was after them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, I can <laughs> guess, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it like it seems like a very surreal um, scene because they're all like staring at something, and some of them are praying, some of them are just like looking straight at you. It's 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 kind of odd, but, but I like yeah, it. this was the uh, oh god, it's a global day of prayer or something like that. I I just happened upon it. I think my girlfriend was like biking past and said there's a bunch of people in the mall, and so I went down there and found like, I, I spent like maybe three hours here just like shooting people doing this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it was really bizarre. It was exactly that. It was just, it, they were sometimes praying toward the direction behind me. Like uh, I think this was uh, east. Yeah, it's toward the capital. Then they would like turn and pray south, then north. I have one of them uh, praying toward the monument, which was also really, like really weird. Um, but yeah. Very, very strange day. <laughs> I like, I like this person's expression here. <laughs> I really do like this picture, actually, the, this one you're showing right now. Um, 
I like that style of like everything's like the horizon's always like no nope, I'm not, I'm not going to be straight for you but <laughs> But the funny thing, it's, I don't it's think I really awesome focus on that. Yeah, that's funny. It's awesome style to actually break the break the rules every once. Uh, I mean, every if it's a thing. And uh, one thing that I'm thinking, maybe uh, cropping up the top just a bit. I feel like less. Uh, I mean, uh, just cropping a bit of the top would like actually, yeah, the section from at least uh, at least from where the rightmost gentleman is standing just a bit off his head just to crop the to crop the rest and it just mm -hmm. it kind of feels like we got as much of uh, information there like you know if you crop the top like it would still be mostly the same picture but it would be a more condensed okay yeah i i my, my thing about this is that i can't find the subject and that may be purposeful and interesting but I don't know if it's the American flag woman, or if it's the uh, the the woman with the fear of God shirt, or the four the the three women on the ground together. Like, there's I keep jumping from group to group to know who I'm looking at. But mm -hmm. that doesn't make it lesser or better. I'm just saying that's just how I I see the picture. So I think I I actually so maybe what I'm trying to say is I actually see like three very interesting photos in this one photo, and I'm. That, that's kind of where my head's going. Gotcha. And, and, and that's a good point. Um, so what I would say is like, I think that shows that this is a good photo because, um, you know, like the last thing you want is somebody looking at your photo for like one second and then looking away, mm. right? With this photo, like I'm kind of taking my time to see what's being presented to me. And I think that's a good thing. I am. Um... I would have to disagree. I think the first time I saw this photo, uh, I mean, since this is the last photo you saw, I kind of picked up on maybe like the the way you frame your photos. And I think it's like unconventional angles. And so using the rule that I made up, uh, I think it was like kind of like your, your subject is always like the one person or like the, the one thing that's like oriented like regularly and I think that would be the girl in the center of the photo who seems like she's most on the ground mm -hmm. if that makes any sense like oriented regularly as a, as a person should while everyone else is kind of like on another plane of the earth <laughs> 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 and so it's like it's unnerving it's like really unnerving it's like I, I could compare it to um that scene in Black Panther where like Killmonger finally got the throne and it's like the camera did like a one eight like a 360 spin and I just yeah. felt so, like something's off. Like there's like something's off with the balance of the universe. And it's just like, and it's kind of like this. It's like we're midway through like the earth tilting. And like why is like everyone on like a different angle plane? It's an interesting photo. Like that's why. And I really do appreciate that you try to like get as much people in the shot as possible. Because what we end up with is a lot of characters um, that we could explore in the frame. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the fact that you didn't give any context. Um, kept us on our toes. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, one more thing. Uh, the, the the one with the law enforcement officers. Uh, yeah. That photo, I mm -hmm. I really like that the the one off the uh, the supervising officer in white is what really stands out to me. Um, without that, without that, it would still be interesting. But because there's one person in a different uniform um, really makes it very interesting. And with, with all the other um, officers standing the, the other direction is, is, is interesting because now we see Metropolitan Police repeated over and over again. And you've got, you've got patterns of the crosswalk, the insignias, the buildings are all in patterns. And then there's just one guy there in the middle. So that's really great. He's literally the one, one uh, odd man out in terms of like everybody's like, oh, yeah, and and this guy, the, the, the one's looking straight at me. <laughs> oh man, yeah. He he was staring at me the entire I, as I I took the shot, kept walking, and he just kept turning his head and watching, 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 watching. I was like, uh. <laughs> you are the you are the one person standing behind his his people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely more volatile than shooting trees. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, man. Oh, thanks, guys.
definitely encourage you to like stick with maybe like explore more shooting street and people. I think you bring a very interesting perspective um, to street photography. Cool, thanks. Very yeah, it's definitely it's it's been I, I can't stop doing it. I literally I take like the camera with me to the grocery store and <laughs> show people at the grocery store because like it's it's addicting. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I the, this is like a combination of candid and street photography. Um, I kind of walk around with my camera all the time. Uh, so this was in, I want to say Boston. I, f I forgot. Um, yeah, I think Boston. Um, and yeah, this was like during like the very morning. I just woke up and started looking down, like trying to get like a good height vantage point. And I was trying to really get like shadows or like a photo with like that emphasized shadows. And I managed to get this one. Uh, which I'm really proud of. Um, yeah, so that's the first photo. Uh, the second one, this was in Centerville. It was by my friend's house. And I noticed that there was shoes there. And I tried taking these, this photo earlier in the day, but it just wasn't coming out right. So then I just came back like later on, grabbed like a, a big flash and shot a bunch of these and this one came out pretty good um and i did post edit it a bit uh to make it a little better because there was like a tree and stuff so that's out but yeah um yeah uh so this is my uh, girlfriend uh so in her house she has these lines these little you know light lines so i always thought oh that's a good that's, that's a good space for a photo so then I just told her to, uh, you know, go get, like go up onto that wall. And I kind of like tucked her shirt so that it looks like she's laying down, but she's not. It's a, it's, 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 it's a wall. And her, and her hair also like I pushed it up. So it gave like this weird effect where it, it seems like it'd be like a carpet, but it's really not. And so I really like this photo. Um, I like the texture of the wall. I like the lines uh, here going over her eyes. So that's the fourth photo. This is the fifth photo again, trying the same thing. Um, there's like there's tape uh, behind her uh, it, it, <laughs> to make to make the scene like it's a uh, the floor. But yeah, uh, her her hair too. Like 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 there's shit here. But yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the next photo. Yeah. That one uh that one's drop drop dead good um mm. really, really like this really like everything that's going on here i'm interested I, I like the eye i mean i would love if both eyes were in the light but i'm okay with how it is now so i tried that i tried that this is the best that i could get no no it's yeah. great it's, it's great either way like um yeah. and then the idea that you were saying that it's actually on the wall is interesting because i was wondering if you've ever thought about like playing with that wall thing more and like having stuff standing up in front of her that would be on the ground, like a Christmas tree or something, you know, something that goes straight up yeah. to like play with that, that change of perspective even more. If you, if you, if you're able to do that, that, that for real, I thought she was on the ground. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, yeah. So what, what you, could you do to push that even more? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of my ideas, you know, uh, I kind of <laughs> grab from like magazines and like, because, because I get access to like all these like, you know, fine art magazines. So I kind of get inspiration a lot from other artists. So I saw somebody else do this and I thought that was a great idea because I remember this wall. So, but yeah, uh, I think you're, I think that'd be really cool to do like, try to get something that's, you know, exposes the fact that this is an illusion, I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can, yeah, you, from things coming down to things going up, play with gravity a little bit since you have this cool texture to play with. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because it's so isolated, usually you see buildings behind it or like you were saying, the sky is too bright, having it so dark, but yet lit up. Did you strobe this or is that just natural ambient? No, no, I, I used the flash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so like okay. there's, so like right here, like there was a, a silhouette of a tree. 
So I kind of took that out. And uh, and the drug dealers didn't chase you away after you did it. You were good. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, it's a good shot. It's very good. I like it's, the pretty, simple. it's pretty good actually. I I I remember having some something of a similar shot, but the thing is that I was starting out just then, and I feel like the building behind was actually most distracting. So this is actually the best in focus shot of a shoot, like and actually sort of think about. this week has been really eventful for me in terms of photography because uh, I went to shoot my um, my friend's proposal to his girlfriend yesterday but uh, while waiting outside to um, kind of like wait for them to arrive because I was set up at you know um, the most kind of like stereotypical DC place location was like to, to propose to your girlfriend was the uh, reflecting pool at the uh, next to the Lincoln Memorial. So I figured since I already have that constraint, why not do this exercise of like seeing how many like different shots, I guess images I could get of this one location. Um, so that's what I decided to do. Um, but on the way there, I saw this, uh, you, you guys see my screen on Lightroom right now? Yep, okay. Yes. Yes. Awesome. On the way there, I was like, came across this statue. It has like a wreath around it. So, or Christmas ornament. Um, I just, you know, was puzzled over it. I wanted to capture uh, kind of like the frame the statue in a where I could get maybe like the face of the wounded soldier with the wreath. So I thought that was like an interesting perspective. Um, same statue, this photo kind of wanted to get the faces. What I was aiming for was getting the faces of the three figures. Um, I want to blur out the background in a bit, for a bit, um, but also want to get their figures to emphasize uh, just how their three faces. I guess this was like kind of like a experimenting in composition. Um, so while I was waiting for, you know, the two couples to arrive, I noticed just how small <laughs> people were when they stand next to these monuments. So I was just like, kind of got distracted for a bit, perplexed at like how big the columns were when compared to like um, the bush, the people, they're, they're like ants. So just got drawn to that. Um, I guess, I mean, it's been over photographed many times, but Believe it or not, I this is like my like one of the few times I'm actually here at the um, reflecting pool. So I was just like, why not just try and get a photograph of that? I was reminded of um, uh, you know like that sound bar when you listen to music and it shows like kind of like the sound waves. I was reminded of that when I was trying to compose this photo. I was like, that's an interesting perspective, and. Uh, Funny thing is, I almost fell into the pool because I was stretching so far out. <laughs> I was lost my balance for a bit. Uh, good thing I didn't, because I would have gotten hypothermia. Um, but I like the shot in black and white. Um, really interesting shot. Uh, there was this lady. She kept staring at me, probably because I was in a weird, um, like right next to hiding behind a bush, waiting for my friends um, to come. They didn't know I was there. Well, the boyfriend knew I was there, but the girlfriend didn't, so I had to hide. Um, she was wearing all black and that was kind of like fascinating. I wanted to use her as the subject to ground my shot. Um, that was that. And I guess the last one I'll show you is, um, this is unconventional using kind of like inanimate objects as your subject. I guess it's, I wouldn't say it's landscape, but I just was kind of like drawn to this like invisible V um, that was there uh, to just ground my shot. Um, then again, I mean, it was like kind of like my exercise was like trying to find as many interesting things to frame and capture within like a, a limited amount, of, like a limited area. Um, so 
try my best before they arrive to do so. So, uh, and that's, that's all I got for you today. I really dug the, uh, the reflection tool. I think the way um, uh, chose to frame the, uh, the reflecting trees is like really, really good. And like you were saying, like the sound waves, um, it does look like sound waves and it's a, it's a really, it's a really great photo. And yeah, I like how the monument falls in line. Oh, cool. Yeah. It kind of is parallel to it a little bit, which is a need of perspective. And this is not usually what I shoot. I usually shoot like street with people and like um, street portraits. Like I actually sometimes ask people on the street um, if I can get a photograph of them, but like this year has just, I have not shot this year. So it's just like, slowly coming back and this is like an unusual thing so i since i made the rule that you can only up uh share things from 2020 i yeah so <laughs> well, I, I think it's really good to jump back into that i felt weird about shooting people in mask at first and now i'm okay with it like because it's become so normalized like when I go to New York City, like I just feel like I can shoot anyone anywhere at any time. And then a lot of times in DC, it's a lot weirder, but now it just feels like it's a lot easier to shoot street now. Um, so I hope I hope you get some before the year ends and, and get out there and actually ask people, you know, get, get, them, get them smiling behind a mask. Yeah. I really like, I really the, like first the first one. one. <laughs> nice, dude. Oh, oh, yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah, I really like the first one. I kind of, um, I think it would be cool if, uh, I don't know if you have them in the other shots you took of this, if the, essentially the first two shots were the same shot. Um, so if you were to get the face of the statue above this, the fallen soldier, um, in the shot with the wreath, I think would be really interesting. Like, I did, I, think it's equally as weird as why there's a wreath here but maybe i, I have no idea what why people put that there there might be a reason i don't know <laughs> yeah wait did you put the wreath there no man oh i encountered it yeah <laughs> well okay well i really like this shot like you know because like you're, you're cropping out that face so it, like it's already like a little more unusual than it would be just like a normal statue but then like the wreath kind of I don't know, for me, it has like almost like a comical feel to it because it's like somebody's dying, but they're also saying like, hey, Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> the hand is a good placement. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Whoever placed it there <laughs> did a good job. Yeah, it's, it's part of the Vietnam Memorial. Yeah. So yeah. Probably, yes, it is. Yeah. Probably put uh, wreaths all over. But yeah, no, that's oh, interesting on the hand. Yeah, there were wreaths all over the... Um, the wall. The yeah. Vietnamese. Okay. yeah, this is the, the women's the women's statue of the Vietnam Memorial. Yeah, I do really like it. Uh, I the last picture, the last picture of the bush, uh, bush as a foreground to the uh, the Washington Monument. I um, yeah, that one. It's, I like it. It's like, it's one of the more like, you know, unconventional pictures of like, you know, it's, it's like there's a bush and then there's like a familiar uh, object in the distance kind of a thing. I kind of like that whole uh, that's a position, uh, if that's a word for it. It's at least one of the more unusual shots. So I, uh, I, I like that. Uh, I mean, uh, that attempt and the effort for it. It's especially unusual for this place. Like, I feel like when you go to like the National Mall, it's it's really hard not to take the all of the images like we've all seen a bunch of times. Yeah. And so, like, I know every time I go to the mall, I literally end up shooting the same thing I saw and the same thing I already took a picture of like a week before that. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is a fun experiment. Yeah, it's definitely out there. So um, I, re I really do like uh, the effort for that. I mean, I guess this was a bush you were hiding in, right? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, this well, well, it's around the area. So if I were to turn my camera like behind me, 
this is actually them right here. That was, uh, he later proposed to her and she said yes. Um, oh, nice. This was where I was like standing in like the front corner. And so this was actually an inter interesting kind of like layering of like materials. Um, so I date an architect, so she would like appreciate like the materiality as she would say, <laughs> the columns in the shop. <laughs> so um, here's, I guess, here's other pictures without like the plants, um, wait. That one's that one's a decent one, but I kind of was I kind of like the lines um, that went into it. So, but um, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks I for like that. that other one, the one where uh, it's a lot more isolated. The it's just the one in, in the the two frame. Yeah, the two in the frame. That one. Yeah, I kind of like that more. It's more simplified. Yeah, the same. It's a very like unconventional proposal shot like i really like it yeah but um so really well i guess while i have i can just share a couple more if that's okay yeah, sure. yeah i mean i really was trying to keep like uh behind them while they were walking down towards the reflecting pool because that's when he was going to propose to her so i was like kind of like behind them for a lot of these shots, um, I want to capture kind of like having the monument in the background. I haven't like color corrected this or anything. I just uploaded it on the computer, no crop either. So um, this was what I have in the camera. So as they're walking and then I think Took a whole bunch, but you know, I mean, like David, this is. I'm assuming when you're talking about like the typical shot of the, this is probably what it is. You know, this is my obligatory shot to them. I mean, yeah, th that's still that's still really good. No, yeah. they, it's a great photo, even if you've even you know, even if it is stereotypical of the spot. Like the reason why yeah. it is because it's a good photo. Mm -hmm. I do for the clients, man. <laughs> But yeah, thanks guys. Did she say yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said yes. <laughs> Good ending. Weird. They're my best friends. <laughs> That'd be an issue. <laughs> okay, those would be the best photographs at the end of there. <laughs> you push to the pool afterward. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's sad because I, I one of the things I specified to him was make sure you guys both had your mask off because I want to capture her reaction. But for one reason or another, I think there were a lot of people there that day and she didn't feel comfortable with taking her mask off. So you, I didn't really get a good capture of her reaction. Um, it's memorable that when I look back a few years mm -hmm. later, it's like, why would wear masks? It's, it's like something that we remember. Mm -hmm. But I did ask a stranger um, to use my iPhone to shoot the video. So they have both photos and video. So thank goodness <laughs> for that. But alrighty. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this shot I captured in Union Stations um, one of the morning um, during the pandemic. So very quiet, everything's closed, there's no people at all. And I was I saw these spots, especially like I like that curve, the staircase, and then that, that loop back. And um, I just waited there for a while to see people pass by and and she passed by with a with a trolley and on the right spot that I want her to be. So I saw a light that look of like um, it sort of works like a leading line point towards that side. But then at the same time that you see the background of it is like oh that's something going on there or something because usually Union Station is much more busy and crowded. But this case is yeah just quiet and dead. Second pictures um, I took recently um, with one of the um, these persons I met online and uh, through Instagram. So uh, she's a hairstylist, and I want to work on some some strong woman look like a superhero. As like this year is bad enough, so I just hope like something positive, something strong that uh, I want to capture to send a message that you know hang on tight. So um, then. 
I work with her and and I told her about the idea. The idea. Um, then we worked together for the shots. So I put the strobes at the back of her and with a light stand. Then I photoshopped away that light stand away. So um, the inspiration is original from Wonder Woman. So um, Wonder Woman have that one one photo or one poster is like with the very strong backlight that way. So um, then I work out this spy locations and I think it's perfect location for this shot. So that's why we, how we arrange that. Um, and I want her to look very um, confident, very uh, badass looking. So it, it portrayed very strong female, um, very strong confidence for, um, that look. And last photo is the early of the year I took when I travel, when I still able to travel early this year. Uh, I was with Vietnam, I was at Vietnam together with my family. And um, I, I passed by this um, temple. So that on the left hand side, there's a door to the temple. So uh, it's still early in the morning. So all the shops are closed. And I saw this old lady and she was like selling the basket of like all these um, things that they use for prayers. At the same time that she was looking for a light to light up her cigarettes. So uh, I look at her, it's like, it, it has that very sad looking that, um, um, at least to me, that's like, she's um, kind of old and then she still try to make a living. But then she, instead of making herself better or healthier, and then she choose cigarettes. So that is that kind of the very contrast feeling I have when I look at her. Yeah, so that's three photos I, I chose for tonight. Yeah, your Union Station photo is, is amazing because of the minimalism of that, that, yes. that point that you found. I mean, like, this is a very familiar spot and you really, like, nailed it in a photo. It's a great job. Thanks. It looks like an M.C. Escher painting or sketch. That's cool. Yeah, uh, kudos to you and uh, this picture, the really contrasted picture, and even uh, including the uh, the traveler on the uh, bottom right. Yeah, I, at first I tried to try to compose her in like rule of thirds, but then no, that's not what really works. So yeah, she's like in that. It almost seems like she's the only one in Union Station right now. Yeah, she's yeah. At that time, maybe there's only like few people. I waited yeah. quite a while for the shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's good. This is a really impressive shot. Um, I like everything about it. Uh, you like, like even like the small detail, like the fact you have like peak Seria Uno in the top left, just to like fill yeah. it, like just to fill in that space and like have something else opposite of the woman. Like I really like that. I like all like the lines, all the textures, like all like the shapes that I'm, that I'm seeing. It's uh, you know, like it's Thanks. not like a very like minimal, but it's really good. Because I it's think like, it actually it looks like a, a you know a old timey shot. Like you'd actually want to show this is the type of picture you want to like you know aspire to. <laughs> I pro I, I turn the color to black and white, but I process it a little bit more to make it more grainy as well. So that it, it does feel a little bit like more like an old film type of photo. Vintage. Yeah, yeah vintage. Same Very for that third photo just now, that with the old woman. I love that she seems to be the perfect subject for the uh, the shot. Which one? Uh, oh, the first photo. Like oh. she was like uh, in like kind of like uh, what looks like yeah. a hoodie or like a cloak. Very mysterious. Um, you asked me to, you know, the beauty of this photo is that it's timeless, right? You, you can't really pinpoint it to a certain time period. So that in of itself is great. Um, I really value that in a photo. Um, but I really love how my eye is first drawn to the figure. And then, it, you know, the I, staircase kind of leads me up the photo. You, look back. So you get to Pizzeria Uno. Um, but... Yeah, it's a lot, lot going on here. But even though it's could at first come off as a minimal photo, but there's a lot of like repetition and patterns for you to keep your eyes, you know, exploring the, from edge to edge. So appreciate. Thanks.
Okay, thanks. I, wait, can you go back to the other photos? <laughs> oh. Like the like the second one, rather? This one? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is impressive line. It's great. Yeah, wait, where did you shoot this? Sorry. Uh, I have a stroke at the back of her uh, with a light stand. Then I shoot straight from in front. Um, yeah, and then they have a reflect, a whole reflector at the back of me as well. So then when the when the stroke uh, fire at the back of her and then bounce back to her face to fill out her face. No, no, yeah, yeah, but like, where is this? Like, oh, like where's that building? What? Spy Museum. Oh, okay. Yeah. The off the Lafont Plaza. Yeah. Great location. That's right. So the, the reason I choose one of these locations is because I, I like that red light and I saw it looks like an arrow that pointing to the subject. That's how I compose the photo. Yeah, that's really smart. I, I, like, I like that it's such a lot. The, Thanks. The, the red lights really make this really good. Very Captain Marvel-like. Yeah, that, yeah, that's an that's yeah, inspiration, sure. Captain Marvel. Um, Black, uh, Widow, Black, Black Widow vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah. yeah. I, when I when I contacted her, that I sent her some like some look in terms of dressing, hair and stuff. I actually sent her Black Widows the like, the way oh, how yeah? Black Widow dress up like like leather jackets, um, that type of fittings. But then I want the different type of hair rather than Black Widow that curly hair. I think it would be nice to. I feel like the spy museum at night is very like underutilized as a space to photograph, mm -hmm. and I think it'd be cool to like explore that space more and like see what you can yeah. shoot with it. Yeah, so I wanted her to be um, very more fierce looking, confident and yeah. Have you, have you uh, taken a look at this in black and white? Um, uh, no, I have not. That's hey, a good idea. Maybe I could try it out. And the only reason I'm saying that is just because of the tungsten light from the, the uh, spy museum is the only thing that's like taking away from it a little bit. Not that you couldn't change that, but no, the whole thing is great. Like no, nothing needs to be changed, but if I'm just like dropping ideas in there. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Actually, well, I might try that and see how that turned out. I actually think that the red background plays to like the superhero look because she's standing in front of it. It's red. It's like, it's an evil looking kind of a building. So she's putting that behind her. She's clearly strong and confident standing in front of it, especially with the bright white light contrasting against it. So it's like I get like a good and evil vibe. The thing that was a little bit distracting to me is how bright the ground is. Mm. Um, it's very, it's very bright and white. And I would just probably tone that down just a little bit. Um, also because her boots are pretty cool too. I think like um that would be good details to include in in her entire appearance i think okay yeah good idea i'm gonna try it out thanks oh all right actually uh, that's a fair point it's like the ground actually has that whole the highlights are slightly blown off on one uh this side yeah it's like near the boots it's like yeah that the highlights are slightly blown off during yeah uh, in that area Yeah, I try. I will try to recover that and see whether I can do something about it. Or try to make the uh, the ground consistent uh, in the consistent lighting of the like from top to bo uh, bottom, the consistently like lit in that aspect. The the reasons I um I want it to be contrasted a little bit uh, from the back is also because I like the shadows. Right. Actually, another one with a uh, much longer shadow. I I was further away with longer shadow, mm -hmm. but then I I feel it sort of like dilute the her look. So that's why I I came back and come closer to her and then taking other shots which is closer. So at first I was thinking that more on playing with the the shadow, but mm -hmm. and I, I I changed my mind from the shots. 
um it's it's pretty good and it's like uh, with all the all the techniques that you use it's like it, uh, the results look really uh, good it's just uh, uh as i said the highlights over there other than yeah. that it's a uh, really good i'll, I'll try mean, try to tone it down and see whether i can do that and recover some detail yeah I mean, it's a neat, uh, neat team, actually. So, thanks. I think for the third photograph, I'd like to see more of like kind of like the objects that surround her. Um, for example, I think if you were to include more of the flag, the uh, Vietnamese flag, uh, I, it, it, I think it add to the photograph. Yeah, um, I, I have that. I have that uh, in the original photo. Yeah, I, I crop it out so. I thought of like maybe tighten it so that it's a stronger message, but yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, I mean, no, I mean, I don't know what the original photo looks like, but I think looking at the uh, kind of like the crop version, I, I like to see more of kind of like the, um, the electrical lines, the Vietnamese flag and the uh, street grate uh, on the lower right, I think. Here. M might add more to the photo, but um, very. I, I I like kind of like the range of black and white in this photograph. It's it's a lot. It's like going from kind of like you know it, it it's well exposed. It's what I'm trying to say. Going from like you know white to like the on the wall behind her to kind of like the dark dark black of her kind of like pants. So you have a lot of rich range there. Very very nicely contrast photo. Um, shot with iPhone actually this photo. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> I shot this photo with iPhone. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was very <laughs> early in the morning. Nice. Went out to buy Starbucks and and just passed by and then just took photos from iPhone. Wow. Did, did she? Yeah. Did she know you were uh, photographing her? Um, after that, I told her about the photos and I buy something from her as well <laughs> to make her feel better. I agree. I actually think that the other items in this picture stand out to me, like the, especially the wiring, um, mm -hmm. which leads me to think, well, this would have been a cool opportunity to get a really close up shot of her with the cigarette mm -hmm. in her mouth, either like it being lit or. At, at first I was thinking to crop it very tight to very focus on her and uh, mm -hmm. move, move the photo to, to the, to the right hand side. But then, um, then at the same time, I, I want to have a little bit of details of like this is shot in Vietnam. That's why I leave the flag there. But then I don't want to be the entire flag there as like maybe show too much. That that the type of like um, struggle that I have is like I want to show something but not exactly. But I will let people to guess about it. That kind of that kind of idea that at first I have. Yeah, I like it. How I crop it that way. I like it how you originally had it like this because I, I don't know immediately where it is. Not showing the country or not showing the color helps me to not know what country I'm looking at. Like, I like I like it. And also, you were saying it's an iPhone. Like, your distance and everything is fine. Like, this could be any grainy photo from any camera. It doesn't matter. It's, it's great. Yeah, I agree with everything he just said. Um, I think I like how it is. Uh, I really love this shot. I don't really know what, what I would change about it. I don't think there's much or anything that I would really change about it. Uh, what I probably would have suggested was to take more photos of the person after you bought that thing you said. Like, you know, yeah. like, like, like they're friendly with you now, like just like offer to take another photo close up, I guess. But I like this photo a lot already. Yeah. So, I, yeah. yeah. I should have actually missed opportunity. I should have taken a few more photos, the close up look of her face. Yeah, it's true. I like this a lot. Good job. Thanks. Um, I think I have three sets, all of which were done on film. The first set, two sets are 120, and then the other one is 35 millimeter. Um, so yeah, I'll just I just a little background. I'm just a casual photographer, so um, these are just for fun and exploration. Uh, like I said, there's two sets of 120. This first one and the second one, and this third one are all within the same location. Um, all of which I was trying to capture like 
a desolate kind of a vibe because that's what it felt like when I was there. Wanted to get a lot of detail as I could. Um, I'm not too experienced with getting focus and getting like these really clear shots, but I was kind of surprised that they kind of came out pretty clear. So, but looking for any like tips on maybe even like the concept of it too, that would be very helpful. Um, this is the 35 millimeter. Um, I put this on Instagram, but this is something I did for COVID specifically was I felt like it was a really good opportunity to do something selfie related um, or just like self portraits. So this was me being in a seat and this is me actually in the seat, um, both 35 millimeter. Uh, I had to figure out how to get the focus right, even though I was doing like a self portrait. I just, um, it's, it's not clear, but I don't think that was intentional. I just tried my best to make sure it was focused with the self timer. And then this last one is 120, which um, came out pretty clear and uh, was trying to figure out how to do depth of field, um, which I think came out pretty interestingly. And then this is the second one. Um, I believe that's it. So yeah, I, really, I really like the black and white self-portrait. Thanks. That one, it looks like uh, almost like the, the portraits that were taken during the last pandemic <laughs> 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like this one. Yeah. Thanks. The sequence is really cool, too. The, the two in nature, the like path and then the uh, like horizon. Yeah, those are the three. Those are, I, I like all three of those together, like uh, very, very, um, very epic, very like just something you just want to see and just look at for a while and take in. Um, these are great art, art prints. Yeah. yeah I like this one a lot. Yeah, this give me a, a vibe. I was, oh, oh, go sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say with this one. I I think that, that word epic is 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 a fun word because I um it was like kind of like a grand scene um I didn't edit this in any way but I was a little disappointed with like it kind of looks really it's maybe hard to see and I'm not sure if that's like a problem or not or if it's like maybe that's a good thing um I'm curious to know if that's something someone saw before but um sorry it was, um, no, it's fine. Uh, I really like these three photos a lot. Uh, like, 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 like you said, like they they show like desolation and like they almost seem like something like a professional like like location scout would take. Like they seem very cinematic, and I really like that. Um, and I also like the fact that like they have these like square crops. Like it really adds to the like immersiveness of of, of these photos. Really like these. What do you can I ask? What you're shooting these though, the square, the medium format ones. Uh, what's the question? That what what film was using? No, what camera were you using? Oh, um, I th it's a Mamaya um, twin oh, nice. reflex camera. I think it's cool. like X. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. Is it the C three thirty? Uh, it's my chance. I think so. Um, I could tell you like in one second. Uh, C. 220. Oh, okay, cool. I have the C330, and I was like, these all look this look like kind of familiar. Oh yeah, awesome. That's a, it's a really fun camera, dude. Yeah. It's it's exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's my favorite camera. <laughs> hey Alex, were these three images taken in the same location? Uh, I that sounded kind of far away. Can you say that again? Oh, yeah. Were these three images taken in the same location? Yeah, they were all kind of I went on a hike so once at the top of this hike was like a peak and it was very foggy um it was a little bit alpiney which is like why these like really um there's not a lot of trees and stuff it's just kind of bushes so once I got to the top I saw like these this pathway and um this is like very very top so there's like a there's like a horizon to it but it's it stands on the top and overlooks like the entire hike and stuff like that so and this is like when you get to the top here, you look down and it's just like full of these like uh, dead trees and or like 
trees with their leaves gone. I really like the, the next two with you in, in the seat. Uh, I think those two are really good together. Um, I don't know how you could make them a collage, but I feel like that would work too for these. But I like them as, like as they are as well. I like the fact that you're out of focus. I like the fact that the seat is framed how it is. Like I really like these two together. It's a really great set of photos. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think what I was thinking with this one was kind of my presence of being like stuck at home all the time now. And it's just like at once it was an empty chair because I would, you know, go to work and be away from home. And now I'm like, well, now I'm here. <laughs> um, as simple as that. Also, I'm miserable. So <laughs> you'd be surprised how, how, uh, how we, uh, you know, how we all feel that way this year. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the feeling of being there but not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. That came out very. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Um, go for it. Yeah, uh, can you show the last two? I just want to see them again. So this was one twenty as well. Um, I didn't edit this either, and I'm just like really surprised that so much color came in because I it's kind of not often that I end up getting a lot of color which I think had a lot to do with just the sun um, and being like in the woods where there's a lot of green so I think it just really fortunately worked out really well um, but really the idea for me was like all right well this camera has depth of field like setting I let me figure that out and two it was just perfect lighting. Like it was like, I saw all the patterns of the leaves, like while we were walking, I was like, oh, this is cool. I can see like all these different leaves shining on you. So I t told my brother to stop and do a quick photo. Um, I was, I did want to like make it a little bit more like moody, like artistically, like with his hand on the shoulder and him like feeling the sun rays, which isn't necessarily something that I was ever comfortable doing with people before. Um, I don't really take pictures of a lot of people, so I, like, um, was a little bit uncomfortable, but excited with, like, having somebody, like, act out something, I guess, rather than have it be candid or, um, yeah. I really do like it. Uh, I like this one a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the, the way you use the light from the leaves is great, um, the way mm -hmm. it's framed in there really good yeah mm -hmm. actually and uh, i think i like all the portrait shots mm -hmm. yeah you know the uh, in the selfie i know we are all I, miserable <laughs> i think the blurring of the background and to have kind of like the silhouette of the leaves on his skin really adds to like the motion i feel from the shot i'm makes me feel like i'm there and there's like a lot of breeze going through mm -hmm. Um, as you were shooting this photograph, like the rustling of kind of like the, the canopy. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I mean, you must have shot this at like a very um, open aperture, like less less than 5.6. Mm -hmm. A lot of bokeh. Am I saying that right? I don't know. Lots of- <laughs> Bokeh balls. <laughs> bokeh balls, yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of that. Um, but also at the- lower left corner of this frame it, it it almost translates into movement like blurring the movement it's not like there's not a lot of poker balls there mm -hmm. to tell you the truth i'm not really sure how they got there i just i kind of figured it was something with how i set it up but i kind of yeah. I love how you presented it though i think that's i i appreciate you getting that kind of like thought out of it, which is cool. Motion and stillness. I appreciate this. Um, also, I think on the next shot that you did of your brother, his left shoulder is a little bit blown out. Um, like, oh, right here. Very bright. Mm -hmm. um, but I prefer the other one. 
Gotcha. Oh yeah. Um, David says that uh, uh, you went robot again. So. Oh, sorry. I just said I prefer uh, this one because his left shoulder is blown out in the second one. Yeah, that's a good catch. I didn't even notice that. Um, it's much more balanced, which I think does make it look better. I really like these photos of your brother. Uh, I don't know if anybody else got this, like, or got this like impression. But like, when I saw this, I thought like, it looked like a like a like a musician or like an indie musician's like, right. Spotify, you know, I the same Spotify <laughs> profile picture or something. <laughs> Like, like it seems like something that, that album like, art. Like I was thinking about album art. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like an album. Like it seems really cool. <laughs> like and like, like this, this, that's like such a weak, like a weak word to use, but like it looks cool. I don't know how how else to really word this. <laughs> it's a really good shot, dude. Uh, it's funny you say that because my brother he he makes music and he we've been there's a band called Porches, which is a guy, and like yeah we were watching music videos from him and it was just like this urban kid in like a country like aesthetic it was like this weird clash between the two and i was like oh that's that feels reminiscent of like where i grew up you know which is where we are in this picture right in this currently so i don't know i wasn't intentional with that but i appreciate that that feedback because that seems and feels very relatable to to me and him did you shoot this on film Color film, Alex? Yeah, it was 120 something. I don't remember what brand it was. I've, I would have to commend you on like how well this turned out because uh, I have trouble shooting color film too. I know that, I mean, especially when you're in like a wooded area and you have a lot of things blocking light. Hmm. I do have tr trouble like setting the exposure and like to make sure I overexpose a little bit, but not too much. So I think for the way you worked with the color film i think it turned out really well um thank you very hard to work with if your <laughs> brother ever releases like a solo album like this yeah. is the album art dude. <laughs> <laughs> good. really good morrissey <laughs> yeah it's morrissey let's do it <laughs> i like that it, it's it's usually when you have these pictures of like lots of sunlight on somebody especially if, like the like, exposed shoulders uh the typical thing you would expect is for them to be enjoying that they're getting the sunshine mm -hmm. um but in this case it's almost like it's a little bit overwhelming for them and it's it's unusual in that way and it's i think that at least for me that's the interesting part i keep getting drawn to his eyes and that he looks slightly uncomfortable but enjoying it at the same time i don't know <laughs> like he's just there mm -hmm. Alex, for your landscape uh, pictures, I, I really appreciate how much room you give the, um, the sky. Uh, and the fact that you, they were all taken on the same day, I think it works really well as like a storyboard or like a triptych guiding us through where you were. Mm. Um, and uh, like, I think for this shot, I think this is the most like sharpest out of the three shots. But I, I do prefer kind of like the ambiance that kind of like a little out of focus gives to like the first shot of like the grassy terrain, tundra. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I did like enjoy like looking throughout kind of like the details of the grass in the shot because um, there's no really particular one subject to look at. I know there are like the three stones, um, but I mean, I think that's kind of like the appeal of the shot is that it's it's very moody, very, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think you had a little bit of gripe with the, um, the, the tree, like what you were focusing on with the, the tree branch shot. But I do want to say that like it's the contrast you give to the tree and the way it's exposed kind of like really grounds our attention to it. Whereas, you know, the kind of like uh, the, the more you look up, it gets kind of like faded into the distance, into the mist. Mm. And so I think you applied, for, for, for what you were photographing, I think you applied just the right amount of kind of like exposure to the branches in the foreground. Um, I mean, this could have gone come out as like, kind of like they were all kind of like under exposed or like not, not exposed enough. So 
Mm -hmm. I think for what you were photographing, I think it really came out um, well. Thanks. I appreciate that. If you like this kind of minimalist stuff, Michael Kenna, if you've heard about him, I don't know, you may have already heard his name, um, but he's a really interesting photographer that's been doing work um, on, I think, almost exclusively medium format, um, like six by six stuff, black and white, um, starting from my, around the 60s, maybe, maybe the late 70s. What's his name um, Michael Kenna. I can drop his name in the chat. Uh, I would appreciate that. Thanks. He's fantastic. I, I admire him greatly. Yeah, I heard, uh, I heard of him, actually. Uh, and thanks for reminding, actually. I really have to see his work again. Mm -hmm. There's also this, like, Japanese photographer who just takes photographs of um, oceans and waves. And he does it in different parts of the world with different oceans and seas. And you can just stare at it for hours because it's, like, printed large scale. I, I don't know his name. I forgot his name. I feel bad, but, yeah. I mean, there's nothing... There's nothing else like it. I mean, it's just the ocean um, with no kind of like visual of the sky or anything. It's just waves. And it was, it's like the most compelling thing. <laughs> so never question. I guess it's always you should just photograph everything. I mean, that compels you. So mm -hmm. thanks, everybody. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, this year's kind of been slow for, uh, slow for me as well. It's like usually I'm, my background is mostly like I've been shooting street for close to now two years. So every weekend I'd actually have this whole incentive to actually go out and shoot something. But ever since the whole quarantine actually started, uh, started it's been a bit of less. I mean, again, it's an amateur. Uh, I'm an amateur photographer, but this was actually ending the streak. Uh, this picture over here was actually ending the streak of like going out every weekend to actually take photos in DC. This was in uh, March, uh, the first week of March when the uh, quarantine uh, just started. And um, I guess there was this whole idea of like you know, people are wearing masks, not wearing masks. It was not that, um, I don't think people actually were started around that time, but things were starting to look really different. Like this, uh, this is Union Station, this picture. Or I just you know, came back into DC and uh, they had this weird fixture over there. And I'm like, okay, what the heck is happening? It's like the whole, uh, I mean, quarantine has started and like Union Station looks like some extra quarantines going, going on over there. <laughs> Uh, I guess it was just a couple of uh, uh, some construction going on at the time, but it was deserted during that first couple of weeks in Union Station. And I decided to actually keep this as a back um, you know, backdrop over here to actually just keep this in frame, uh, seeing that weird tent situation uh, guarding the front door of the Union Station and want the lights to actually sort of come down and uh, I mean come out of the shadows and sort of focus on anybody sort of coming in and out of the uh, out of the hallways over here so this was one picture I actually took at the time so after that this was actually a couple of months in it was actually July uh, the 4th of July and uh, I was actually uh, trying to get my fiance at the time to actually just show around DC. And I didn't know I was gonna walk into like a protest. So these guys actually all came up and uh, I mean, uh, they were all riding their bikes and it's just like, okay, I guess uh, I finally see a DC protest in my own eyes over here. So there you go. Wanted to avoid know. people. But, you know. You didn't know you were going to run into me? <laughs> yeah. Possibly. <laughs> I, swear, I swear to you, I 
tried to avoid people as much as I could, but that was my so first time meeting your wife before your wedding. Like you invited me to your wedding, and that was like oh, you're wedding. you're you're coming up in a few uh, a couple of pictures, Mike. Your I'm coming up in a picture. Uh, actually, that okay. was uh, you were also uh, meeting you was also an accident, Mike. But yeah, so. Yeah, this was this whole uh, uh, protest that was happening on uh, Inde Independence Avenue. So, yeah, I mean, one of the many protests that was actually happening around that time, because it was just a month after the whole uh, Black, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement started. This picture over here is actually... Uh, a week after the elections, actually. Uh, Hung and myself were like uh, uh, meeting up after a while, just trying to actually uh, do some normal street photography, didn't even expect much. And lo and behold, we didn't even know there was another uh, Maga March happening. <laughs> actually, it was not the Maga March, it was on a Sunday. And the Maga March actually happened the day before. Mike, I believe, I think you covered it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been to, I, I, I'm like always there, so. Yeah, so this was at least, um, so we tried to maintain our distance as much as we could, Act, uh, actually. This was on the same road as the museum. So uh, these, uh, these protesters, uh, Hung and I were actually there, we were just like, Two block, I mean, one, two blocks away, and still like you know, noticing the like these guys actually just talking about the whole, uh, you know, recount. Uh, Hung, do you remember? Yes. <laughs> do you remember? Uh, do you remember all the speeches that were actually <laughs> happening over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we stumbled upon it. Yeah. And um, the thing is, this picture, or I mean, why I decided to actually take this picture, uh, picture of this guy walking away with the, uh, the Trump election flag is because of a continuing theme I actually sort of shot over the summer. And it's this picture. This was a uh, Black Lives Matter Avenue. Uh, uh, and... Uh, Actually, that was around the time I met Mike also. And uh, this guy was actually uh, like uh, walk, uh, walking around with the flag and everything. And I'm like, this is possibly the right time. Once he passes me, I'm just going to uh, take the picture where he's like covering all parts of my frame. And I sort of made the conscious uh, decision to actually uh, make sure the, uh, the the flag is mostly there. And even if it does cover in you know, most people's faces, it's like sort of like it's the uh, it's the message uh, message on its own. Like you know, the movement was actually going pretty strong at the time. Like somebody has has to like you know, uh, I mean, even if somebody actually walks with the flag, it's like. It was a statement, basically. Um, this was actually, uh, I was actually took this with my phone and I was uh, leaving the New Carrollton station, uh, Metro station, taking the Amtrak. And uh, while I was actually waiting for my train, I actually saw the, uh, I saw this near the, uh, the escalator that actually you'd have to take to and get back into the station. So um, I just saw, uh, saw this. It was the same, uh, I mean, it was the same day as uh, the, the manga protest uh, that I had actually shot. And I, and I decided to actually just uh, take a picture of this obviously because, well, even though it was the previous day's news, it kind of felt like more of uh, more of the times. And this last picture was, uh, is in front of the White House. I kind of 
uh, felt like I was actually trying to like, uh, like a lot of people were there, but I, I felt like this child, uh, this child and uh, and her brother were like standing in front of a couple of signs that actually made a whole lot of sense at, at the time. It's like a bit of like this whole um, care uh, care for the future. I mean, care for the f uh, future, care for the people you're kind of doing this uh, protest for, and that in conjunction to the white house at the back just sending that uh, that message it kind of was like framed in that aspect that people in the outside actually like w want a bit of the justice back and i framed it in that uh, aspect of like um it sort of made sense in uh, in what i was uh, i mean intending to I'm not that political, even though I actually show, uh, shown you guys all the political photos I have actually possibly would have actually um, shown ever, but I'm not that politically inclined, but I kind of felt like these were like a part of the, uh, a part of the times. This was very 2020. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, the photo of the uh, newspapers on the ground is the one that grabbed me as something mm -hmm. that, that's the one that I'm like really struck by. It's a really good photo. Um, and the fact that there's only one like cover photo on the ground with the president there, that really draws your eye to know what the, what's the headline. But then at the same time, just having the, all the other newspapers spread about with the same color and everything and the green and everything of it it's great yeah i don't i don't care if it's a cell phone or a, or a medium format it's a good photo yeah this is my favorite one too it almost looks like the newspaper is getting sucked into the escalator <laughs> <laughs> or or coming out one or the other <laughs> like the diagonal lines Actually, make it look like it's like a vortex of some kind that's interesting it's uh the escalators turn into like a news distribution machine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does speak oh, that's like, fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun idea. 2020, like, where's all this news coming from? It's overwhelming. <laughs> it's all Fake over news. The place. Yeah. And I think the perspective is good. I actually feel like I'm standing here looking at it myself, which adds to everything what everyone's saying. I think it's a good composition. And I also like how Trump is right there saying loser on it. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. It's like and and I'm pretty sure you guys are very forgiving of the fact that um, this was actually shot behind a mirror. I mean, not mirror, behind the glass, and you could actually see some of the things I was actually carrying at the time. Oh yeah, oh. I didn't notice that. I just, yeah, I if you wouldn't have said anything, I wouldn't notice that. Yeah, <laughs> I right. I was traveling. I was holding a lot of things, and I'm like, let me take out my camera though. <laughs> to the left but i didn't realize you were shooting through glass i just thought it was just the wall was shiny so yeah that's funny it's huh. a really good shot yeah i wonder if there's a way to make it show more clearly that you're you're there um how so i don't know like different like exposure or like contrast to to bring more of your kind of like a, a semblance of your figure into the oh photo. right 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 uh, getting a bit of your the outline of your uh reflection yeah yeah i think the yeah, way I, I think uh, yeah i understand that possibly wouldn't have been that manageable like keeping the inside details and the outside uh, the outside details in focus it's kind of i mean one thing will trump the other sort of but i do understand that actually i actually tried a couple of those <laughs> yeah that would have been interesting too but yeah um yeah that's pretty much uh, me right now i mean it's not uh, it's a kind of a dry year for me <laughs> I really like the first photo too, uh, of like the person walking into the a station. I thought that was really strong too. That and the newspaper were my favorites. Oh, uh, this one, right? Um... Yeah, yeah, that one. Like, I like the fact that, that, that they're not lit. Like, it makes it really like 
ambiguous and then we like it. So this is, um, I, I started shooting just uh, one, one two, actually two things to preface most of my work here. Uh, actually, all my images were taken off my iPhone. I, I really delved into uh, mobile photography uh, back in 2011 when I got my first uh, iPhone. Um, and that's when I also joined Instagram because it was really a platform for mobile photography. Um, and uh, so it was. It was. Uh, uh, it, it was a nice um, arena to be in, and really challenge yourself uh, working with um, you know the camera on your phone versus one that you have all the other uh, things, lenses, and and all that. So, um, and because I would take the bus to work and back home um, before jumping on trains, uh, I started shooting from the bus. Um, and this was taken at the beginning of March. So uh, obviously the, the virus was in DC, but unknown. Um, so this is sort of a look at the, a, a, normal, a, a normal scene in the evening, uh, people you know, leaving work, going home um, as the bus was turning uh, onto Connecticut Avenue. So um, that was sort of the beginning of, of, of my image work for 2020. Um, this, I also like to do portrait work. Um, this was taken in August. I was visiting a friend uh, due to, oops, I don't know why this is going over here. Um, due to the pandemic and her business was suffering, her family's business was suffering a lot of uh, financial losses. Uh, she decided that she was going to um, uh, sell her horse that she's had for 20 years. And uh, I had gone up for a visit to visit family and she asked me um, if I could come and take some shots of her, her horse. And I, I, this was after I had arrived, so I didn't have my camera. And again, this was just using my iPhone. Uh, and this was done, uh, really terrible lighting. It was dark back uh, where the horse stable was, um, fluorescent lighting. So this was post edited. Uh, and I use apps on my phone to do my editing. Um, this here is just a, sort of a documentary uh, for myself and um, I was visiting my daughter and uh, they had just moved into a new home. This was also in August and a census person arrived. Um, and so he stood out, you know, properly distant, uh, distance from her, both masked up. He was asking her questions. Um, so I just noticed this from inside the window of her uh, front hallway um, near the front door. And so this was taken through the glass as well. Um, and I thought it was just an interesting composition and then decided to go uh, to black and white with the image. Um, this was also while on this uh, little break in Pennsylvania back in August, I was staying with a friend and she has uh, um, a little girl uh, um, that through family, uh, not quite her grandmother, but she's sort of taken a grandmotherly role uh, with this little girl. And uh, so she was doing dishes and um, the girl came up and uh, wanted to help her do dishes. And I just happened to walk by and saw that, oh, this is going to be a really nice image with the colors and the light the composition, the two of them standing closely together, her standing on this uh, little step, red step stool, and they took that shot. Ah, so, um, so this was the first MAGA march, um, and uh, I happened to connect with Mike um, you know, I knew he was going to be down there and we ended up meeting, uh, down on Pennsylvania Avenue and following everyone that was marching up to the, or walking up, marching up to the Supreme Court, not knowing what we were, were about to get sucked into because obviously, uh, there was a mix of some mass protesters. Most people were not mass. We were mass, um, 
I knew it was still a little dangerous being, even though we were masked, but uh, um, so I was just trying to get as many shots as I could. And I happened to turn and saw this woman coming, uh, walking by, and I really wanted to get her and her sign. And then this gentleman walked into the frame and although it covers um, some of the, uh, the poster, it stopped the steal. And I just thought it was interesting to see the look on his eye, you know, where is he heading to? He's not wearing anything representative of Trump or, you know, everyone had some type of, you know, hat or shirt or sign. So he didn't, um, or at least I didn't see anything that he was carrying in his other hands because this, is, this did happen fairly quickly. And again, this was all taken off my iPhone. And I did have a wide angle lens uh, on my phone for these uh, images. Um, another shot, uh, which again, a lot of times it's just, okay, here's this kid walking by with all these flags. I take the picture and then as I'm going back to editing, noticing the little baby, looking how the, seeing how the baby's looking at him, or I presume he's looking at this kid. And again, the whole red, white, and blue, you know, America, America. And um, this young boy uh, pulled into this and participating in the, um, the protest or march. And uh, then this was downtown near Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, more flags. And the thing that drew my interest in this particular image was uh, this woman, how she's carrying the flag, um, the look on her face, she doesn't have her mask on and you know, just the red drawing into the red, the white building behind and then the blue sky. So it's a mix of red, white and blue once again um, that was ever present during this particular uh, March. The, and I think, um, so I might have more than six images. Um, this was another interesting person that uh, that uh, I bumped into and Mike was uh, walking with me when, when we encountered her. So I engaged in a little bit of conversation, asking her if I could take her picture. So she was very happy to, you know, oblige and uh, be documented for this. And um, in her right hand, she's carrying a sign and she was very proud to point out that she had gotten one of her fingernails uh, painted. Um, or she did it herself, where she put a T on one of her fingernails in um, tribute to uh, the president. And uh, this is my very last image. So this was last weekend um, downtown uh, uh, as the Antifa um, folks were gathering down by Black Lives Matter Plaza. And I saw this young boy, young guy walking towards me and I just sort of stood in front of him and snapped away and, um, and that's when his hand went up and I don't know if I can see here, but just seeing the one eye uh, staring at me as he's trying to cover his, his face. But, and I just like the, the image, the black on the, on, on the road and everyone dressed up and the light in the background and, you know, the whole scene of downtown boarded up storefronts, offices. So, and I think that is it. I really like the, the last two, especially because they're both engaging with you as subjects. Yeah. But kind of contrasting ways and, you know, and also politically contrasting too. Yeah. Uh, like she's smiling at you with the sunglasses on and the hat, like very proud of yeah. where she is and, and, and I, uh, giving her attention. Like, yeah. Um, and then like the, the Antifa one was kind of in a weird way similar, but in the opposite direction, I guess, like the guy wanted to be blocked away from it. Like from- Right, he didn't want to be identified and she was very proud to, you know, she's not there fighting, she's there. You know, uh, oh, hey, that's- that's actually me on the side right there. I just realized with the tote bag. Oh, up here that's on the left. Bag. Yeah, yeah that's my tote bag. Yeah, I'm uh, taking a picture. Yeah. I just saw that. Huh? And I remember your pictures that you got uh, from when you were doing that upshot. Yeah. But 
Um, one thing, uh, since coming to Washington in 2013, I, I have an interest in street photography. I have an interest in photojournalism. Not that I'm looking to pursue anything professionally. I mean, I'm heading towards 60 soon. And uh, so this is really just uh, a passion and interest. Um, and I really uh, utilize Instagram just to share the images, you know, connected with people around the world, since, you know, since I've been on there since, since 2011. And so it's, it's nice for people to see this and just hear the feedback and their interest in what's happening. Um, and I'm not, I'm not scared to uh, put myself in, in, in these particular situations. Obviously with COVID, it was, okay, now I'm going to just really monitor myself for the next two weeks. And, you know, hopefully I didn't contract anything being in, in this really densely populated um, area by the Supreme Court. Um, because, I mean, we really couldn't move at times. We were really trapped. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it's nice to be able to uh, feel comfortable enough to say, hey, can I take your picture? And they don't find me threatening. Um, so that also makes for, uh, for an interesting image, too. Um, and I've, I've tried to go, on, go to most of the protest march, uh, you know, when the... Uh, the Native Americans came in for um, the uh, Water is Life, uh, South Dakota. I took off from work and I did a lot of, um, got a lot of images from that, the Women's March. The day before Trump's inauguration, I took off from work and was just going around and shooting people that were down on the mall. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I try to get to most of these Events. I, I did not venture down for Black Lives Matter in June because it was just so un, much, so much was unknown about catching the virus at that point. Um, I decided to, to not go down at that at that point, which now I I'm regret a little bit, but um, yeah. I was really drawn to the uh, picture in the kitchen. Um, it has a Norman Rockwell feel to it, and. Uh -huh. Things in the earlier ones you showed really uh, show that you're really getting into the subject matter and you're really intimate with the people. And the intimacy yeah. is very, very good um, here and in the, the census one and in the one with the horse. Those three, I just felt, I felt a lot of intimacy and storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is a Norman Rockwell painting in photo form. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I, had, I hadn't looked at that, but now that you pointed it out, I, I can totally see that. Um, and again, I, I think when you have an interest, and I've seen a lot of the, the people that have, have shown work, um, that you have an interest to encompass all sorts of, you know, um, nature, uh, just street photography, portraiture, um, uh, documentary work. Uh, and I think that's really cool that, uh, that you can sort of figure that out and you have that intuitive eye or mind to say, oh, this is going to be a really interesting shot. And, um, you know, I really don't work with my, my camera anymore. Um, my iPhone is my go-to. Um, and uh, so it's also um, convenient. And I forgot, I did throw one last image on here. This was at the uh, service for um, uh, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg. Um, and I just happened, was really trying to get the sign. And, and then when I later looked at the picture, I saw how the girl was looking at the sign behind her. And again, the matching American flag with the colors of the poster. So, and that. Um, yeah, I, I really like the, the woman with the horse too. Like, yeah, I also really like the horse picture. Yeah, like I when I was looking at it, it was, it was subtle, like, but you there's clearly something distraught about like maybe what she's feeling and like she's sharing with the horse. And then when you explained that she was having the cell, and I'm like, oh, I see now. You know, like it make it's a lot more clear, which is, I mean, that's not the details I need to know necessarily, but I got that feeling without knowing those details in this shot, and I thought that was yeah really awesome, especially like. You know, like she's asking you to take this photo too, which I appreciate. It doesn't need to be candid. Like it, like this is what she wants to tell you, and this is what yeah. I'm. So, like I, I, I thought that was a really 
great shot, especially from her. It's it's a unique perspective um, for something like uh, staged like this. Yeah. Um, there were some happier images I took of her in, in the horse when she took her out to the pasture, but um, this one really, um, when I was sort of curating the images that I wanted to show today, this was the one that I was particularly drawn to and wanted to include that with the portrait work. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. I got the vibe that these were like last moments, even before you mentioned that she was getting, she had to sell the horse. Yeah. It's a very that beautiful capturing, photo. Capturing, um, yeah, facial expression and the woman. It's a very solemn moment, even though, kind of like the colors, um, of it's like ambient, um, it like feels like warm and inviting, like they like they share a connection. But her her face kind of really says it all. Yeah, I really like this photo. It's uh, it's it's like very poetic and it's like you know really good like documentary photography for a very sensitive topic in this, in, in this case. Uh, I don't mean to go back to the process photos, but I do want to comment on that. Like, I do like the fact that you're, you know, putting yourself out there because I think that's like the best way to, to take protest photos. Yeah. Like, and, and you're right, like it doesn't matter what camera you use, like an iPhone's fine for these type of shots because what matters most is, you know, being able to interact with the people and feeling, mm -hmm. and feeling comfortable with them, with, uh, with them. And I think you've produced really good work. Thank you so much. Yeah, I agree with Andres. I, I like the two sets of photos you took with the lady, um, the lady and her nails. I think yeah. the way yeah. you kind of like, uh, you know, interweave that story and like, you know, went above and beyond to like ask her about it and actually had a conversation with her. I think it really puts kind of like I think I, we kind of really need more of that, uh, like kind of seeing like the humanity behind the politics and seeing like wh why someone would um, kind of like support what they support. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important work. Um, I, I really do appreciate this picture that you managed to fit all those people behind her too uh, in this kind of like portrait of her. Uh -huh. um, but also the nail picture too. Um, I think yeah. that was like an extra layer that like you kind of like dove further into, um, yeah. Yeah, and it was also interesting because I'm obviously uh, not dressed in any of the uh, attire that everyone else is, so, and she probably recognized that I was just there to take photos, um, and I was wearing a mask, so, um, yeah, so it was, it was, it's always interesting to be able to um, establish a um, relationship with uh, with the subject, right? Um, thanking them for allowing you to take the picture or engaging in a little bit of conversation, which, as noted, led to her saying that she had put this on her fingernail, and then I asked her if I could take her photo with that, and she was very happy to to do that. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I like I look like forward I look forward to being downtown for inauguration day this year. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be wild. <laughs> I'll, be there. I'll try and get out there myself. Yeah, and nothing. I'm wanting to, uh, wanting to plug a particular uh, product, but um, and I won't mention the name of the brand. But uh, I did invest in a wide-angle lens that I can uh, attach to my iPhone. Um, and I used that for uh, four years ago for the day before the inauguration, inauguration day, getting stuck in Penn Quarter with all the llamas and with the pet activists and or animal activists and everyone else that was out there protesting uh, Trump coming into office. And, uh, uh, and that's really, uh, I, I, it's a nice tool to have uh, working if you're working with, uh, with your cell phone. So. Did you just say llama? Yeah. Inauguration. I, I could come up with that picture while Mike is uh, <laughs> picture and show it at the end. But uh, yeah, there was a there was a llama downtown on in Penn Quarter um, in the day of uh, the the inauguration of President Trump. So, all right. Um, well, thank you again for the feedback and uh, 
yeah, this was very, very enjoyable. I'm, I'm glad I, I found out about you through some Instagram posts. Maybe yeah, thank my... you, Laura. Thank yeah. you for uh, sharing your photographs. We really enjoyed looking at them. Yeah. This is a... Uh... I mean, obviously, like, the bulk of my photos this year has been at the protests, but I didn't... I figured I want to share something, like, about the size. Right, share that. that one, share that one. Talk about this one. This one? <laughs> no, 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 the one before, with the lady on the ground in the pink dress. Oh, this one? Uh, so... What? That's a girl, right? That's a little girl? Yeah. Uh, it's not a... <laughs> Uh, Anya Pond knows her. Anya? Uh, yeah, that's Anya. Uh, so, like, I... I like to do more conceptual portraits. And so I had her... I, we were out... Well, we were out, like, watching the meteor shower, I think, at, in the summer, I want to say. Uh, so other people were shooting like the stars. I'm not super into astrophotography, so I wasn't like really shooting anything. And then I noticed these like skid marks on the ground, and I thought, huh, that'd be interesting. So I had her. She happened to be like the perfect size to like fit the skid marks, and I was like, hey, why don't you lie down here? Let let me take a picture, and that's the picture. Mike. All the other people what? did star photography and you do road kale. <laughs> oh, you know. That's me. <laughs> I think this and is... this, I guess, yeah, I, was, I should probably explain this one a bit. Um, this is a, I also did like a series or I should say not did, I am, it's an ongoing series with traffic cones hung, probably knows about this. So that's a traffic cone that I took home and I placed in my shower and <laughs> I took a picture of the traffic cone in the shower. Also here, seen here. That's, my couch. Really, that's really cool. So was it like a before and, then, and after kind of thing? It's like you made it have no, a shower, no. shower, and then you put <laughs> well, it on okay, your couch. Okay, actually, actually, I mean, I borrowed it from a friend and the traffic cone is was like extremely dirty and it wasn't gonna because I later also like placed it on my bed too I didn't oh, I can well I didn't think like I think these two like turned out better but yeah but like I wasn't about to like put it on a couch or like on my bed or anything else like before I like washed it down first so <laughs> there's that too but I mean so like that a good story going saying, the traffic cone like was uh, for me like a symbol of like um, a metaphor for like standing out so there's something that's out of place because like the traffic cone always like signifies like danger. I think Kong and I have like, a good extended conversation about this one time. Uh, yeah. about, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's there to be conspicuous. Yeah. But, but like, you're not paying attention to like the traffic cone itself. It's there to signify something else. So it's there to be seen, but also be ignored in a way. But, or forgotten, I don't know. So, I mean, with the, I, I think one of you were saying, like, we're all sad. So, yeah, like, so for the quarantine, we're all sad. And I kind of, I, I felt like this traffic cone. So that's my couch. I do <laughs> like the one on the couch. It just, it's just, sorry for interrupting, but I just can't help but see, like, kind of, like, midlife crisis vibes and it's like sitting for therapy or something. Yeah. <laughs> It looks a little worn out, you know. Um, yeah, it is. It's definitely very I feel, worn out. I feel for it, man. And the one, the shower too, like the sad shower scene. Yeah. yeah. I can never imagine that song playing, Everybody Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I really like both the uh, the traffic cones and the, uh, the woman on the ground. All of them feel very concept driven and, and, and like an art book that all fit together. There's a tone and a modality to all of it and a sadness. And they all they all kind of uh -oh. fit together really well. Um, and then with the cones, like it seems like you're putting them in very human positions. Yeah, mm -hmm. that they are like meant to like basically be like these are like kind of like self portraits, like whatever you did with the chair, except like with the cone in place of me. 
kind of. And yes, like there's, I guess like all my pictures are kind of sad in a way. I guess. Uh, but, uh, but Mike, uh, did you consider to, um, trying to change perspective while like it was in the shower kind of thing? It's like show it more towards uh, uh, like the base? Uh, I tried that. I like this. I, I just like this shot much better. I mean, I think it's, I mean, if you see if, I'm, if you imagine this were a person, like you said, then this would be like you sitting in the shower. Like this is like extra sad. You're like not even standing. You're like freaking sitting in the shower at this. And you're just seeing like the top of the person's head. Mm. Um, I really like this perspective a lot. I like the, the fact that it's cut off. I mean, without, I mean, it, then it would be a, a series. So I'm not that afraid of like people not understanding like what this is. Like, I think without the context, people can't really uh, like see that as a traffic count, but taken as a series, like, I don't think that would be a problem. I do see it becoming more of a strong series of the more pictures I, I see you take of traffic cones. I mean, the first time I, I, I didn't get it, but then like as the year developed and I keep seeing more pictures of the traffic cone without yeah. you having to explain yeah. I started to see it coming together. Um, you showed one of the traffic cone, like next to the uh, Washington Monument, right? Yeah, yeah. There's also like that one right there. I mean, eventually, I would have to like uh, adjust like the, all the like the color tones to like match. Right now, they're all like they all have their own like tones and stuff. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if I were to actually put them together, I would have to make them all like the this looks more like surrealist. Yeah. Um, I, did, I, did, I, did, I definitely did play with the colors here. And I was actually with Leo when, when I took this picture. Mm -hmm. Leo who left. Yeah. Leo and I had a conversation about it. I was like, yeah, really? Mike's playing the cones. Is this <laughs> this? <laughs> hey, Mike, one, one question, and it's not yeah. related to the uh, picture. That, uh, actually, it is. What was the reaction of uh, you walking around with the traffic cone? Like what was the in what, broad daylight? What was the what? What was the reaction? I mean, if anybody saw you, what was oh, no, the no, no, reaction? No, 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 I, I wasn't like uh, the traffic cones in the wild, like uh, outside. I didn't place those. Those were found cones. I didn't like place. All oh, right, cones. right, 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 right. So like these, this is, like bringing a traffic cone around and like placing them and like strategically. They, I think like there are enough cones in the city that I. I can easily find like cones in like interesting places without me having having to like carry a cone. But I, I definitely like that was a concern when I when I like brought when I, I brought the cone from my friend right and that when I carried it into my building I was like I mean, like if my neighbor sees me like carry this like beat up cones or like what the hell are you doing? <laughs> that was I had I I had like a moment of like self consciousness there. I want well, to see go and eat breakfast. <laughs> it's the bowl of cereal bowl of cereal that's what i want well i'm gonna get really meta here in my interpretation of this image but if we were to like associate uh substitute the cone for a human person i, I can very much see this person uh this image as like one of feeling like inferior and like lacking yeah. to like something yeah. of a higher stature um yeah yeah it makes me feel sad dude I mean, that's definitely like that, yeah. Having like the, the two like very obvious subjects, the huge gargantuan like giant penis in the back, I guess, and this like tiny cone. I didn't mean like that, but. Which, yeah. <laughs> which is roughly the same thing, almost, <laughs> but still. Um, so. I like the one of the uh, girl in the dress. Looks like you made really good use of like the tire treads on the ground. Um, yeah. If I had known better, I mean, it just it just struck out as like a powerful kind of like because like her dress is like really really vibrant, and but right. it's like like yeah, it's like people have made the comment that like she does like look a little doll like with the dress. Yes, yeah, like a Barbie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it like scene of the crime, like what what happened, is my initial yeah. kind of like reaction to this. Um, yeah. Did you use like a high flash or? 
Uh, no, I had a someone's car. Like I had like my friend's car, like lighting it up from the back. So it's mm. even like, better, too, actually. Like, so it would like look. No, wait, hold on. No, no, no. I did not. I did not have the car. It was a. It was a flash. It was a flat. Like a. You know, if you know, like Gordon, he car he carries around these like giant flashes, and then has someone like hold that flash for me. For like Mine's around, like around. Sorry, I like, I, 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 like roughly like headlamp like level. So like I've tried to like make it look like authentic, like if there is a car. Yeah, reminds me of the uh, crime photos done by Ouija in New York mm. City. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's definitely that. Like this is for me. Like this is like a cone, like an indecisive cone, or like it's almost like a cone trying to play like Frogger. Or just this way or that way. Huh? Yeah, that one's uh basically. Oof. So this is a little different. I threw this in there because just because like. You know, it's just this is a nice looking picture. It doesn't it's not sad. It's, it's just right. You you I want to change your pace. I don't I don't do lands. I don't I don't do like landscapes that much. Um, um, so like this is kind of a rare landscape for me. It was um, sunrise in. I forget where where I was, but like I was out in the mountains somewhere. It's just, I really like having like the sun there and the rays, the layers of clouds. Did you do a lot of um, darkening to get um, that circular sun? Actually, no, because because the sun, that, that's what actually, well, I, I did like, tape, I definitely toned down the highlights, but that's like pretty close to what your eye saw, my eye saw, like obviously like not in black and white. Because, like this, as you can see, the cloud was passing through, like in front of it, and that's what made uh, made the sun like come out like that. Nice moment. I really like appreciate the rays of light beams that yeah. are just cascading down. Um, yeah, it's it really fills in like kind of like the horizon of the image. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, it's it's a pretty gorgeous shot. So, I would and, like, like to see I some more. Um, Sorry, I would like to see some more kind of like um, exposure, like a higher exposure, yeah, yeah. like a rock okay, face, okay. Mm -hmm. some of the trees, maybe not some of the trees, just the rock face in the foreground, yeah, yeah. a little bit more detail. Um, yeah, but love, like the shot, good shot. Yeah, yeah. This is like people, like the two people, uh, workers like boring up. At AT, uh, Bank of America ATM that I had like I like had the person like block up like Bank of so it's just like boarding up America basically. This is at the <laughs> the first Mega March. I just saw this guy. He has such like a lost look, and especially when juxtaposed with this, it just. I mean, that's like you've. I, I love really this like shot. Yeah. yeah, I love this. <laughs> I mean, he just seems so out of place, like, because he's dressed so well and he's also had, like, has that look. That guy next to him with the Biden mask holding up the sign. Yeah, I think like that he's like the sign is supposed to like make fun of like Biden, like not knowing where he is because he's like senile, but like in the context of this shot, like it gets a different meaning. I feel like if you just had the uh the guy with the sign and uh, the guy looking like he's it's like red, why am I here? Kind of a face. <laughs> this is still would be just like a good companion shot together. Mm -hmm. You mean like crop it like close yeah. like this? Yeah. 
I mean, but like having like I I like to like place them in the crowd though, right? Because I mean, it's it's more on a focus on a uh, focus on them. It's like, uh, to me, for the rest of the people, the rest of the uh, the rest of the things in the picture, mm. uh, it's like I understand where it is, but yeah. those two are the most interesting part of it. Right. I actually agree with you. I think I, I like him in the middle of the crowd, especially that there's people in front of him. Um, I really like that. It definitely it makes it it makes him feel or it makes it feel like he's he's in the middle of a crowd by himself. And that I think if you were to crop it just to have him and the sign, you might lose out on the the context that he's literally just standing in the middle. Like uh, the thing is, even if you do crop, uh, crop out, there's a lot of people in the in the frame and I mean in the picture in itself. Just put a bit more and get a bit more context, and you know, get sort of that idea going. Uh, idea going anyway. That he's in the middle of all of this, or is he just like? I mean, that's my perspective on it. But mm -hmm. yeah. Um. These are completely unrelated and that's different. Like, I also like to do like fashion shoots, and after like this is uh, after shooting like protests for like months, I finally like took a break and did some fashion shoots. Was this a one on one, or yeah? I mostly like to like shoot like one on one. Mm -hmm. Actually, I haven't like really shot. This is my first time shooting here, even though I live like across the street. So, how does she standing? Is she standing against a building? Oh, she's, no, she's. This is the National Gallery, Gallery Art, like the glass pyramids. Oh. I just had her, so, but she's so she. I had her leaning against it, but like from this angle, it just looks like she's like almost like falling into it or like leaning against it. You can't really tell like what's flat and what's not. Yeah, I really like this a lot when I saw you go through it. And part of that, too, is, like, the clouds reflection yeah. here gives that impression. You know, it, it's like she's Spider-Man or Spider-Woman. <laughs> I like it a lot. I think it's a good composition, and, and the pose itself is really great, especially with the different um, article of clothing that she has on. Yeah, like, a lot of yeah. you can, I can potentially be selling the shoe, be selling the belt. Exactly. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it has a lot of commercial potential in terms of, like, marketing the products. I would like to add that yeah. um, at first I was a little uneasy about not seeing her left feet, but given what Alex said about it appears to, like, show that she's floating and, like, not really pinning down where she is or how she's, like, able to get into the pose, I do understand it. Um, all right, see you later, David. Thanks for joining. All right. Yeah. See you later. Um, but I, I, you know, I feel like some, maybe you can show her feet, but like not show the exact ground, you know? I think that would be more impactful, but I do appreciate your composition in this photo. Mm. Um, if it was a model shoot and if you were like doing this for a client, um, like Gucci or something yeah. like that, I would do a little bit more editing on um, her uh, stomach. Oh, yeah. That's true. Like you yeah, had to, you had to like, you had to get rid of the folds and all that. Yeah, but, but like you know, I, I don't shoot like fashion, so yeah. I don't know. I can leave it, but I think if it was, yeah, like, yeah. good catch. The like magazine or like yeah, someone right. catalog, yeah, they would want that eliminated, such as the industry that you know exists. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am curious about the heart shaped ones. The heart-shaped ones? What are you talking about? The series you did with indoors with the balloons. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, so this is the this is uh, just this Wednesday with the snow. Um, we were supposed to shoot in the snow, but as you can see, the snow was like so strong that we just it was like it. I can't get in good conscience, like, make her, like, stand out there and, like, shoot. <laughs> so, yeah. we moved indoors, and then 
she happened to have this balloon. So I, it, I it's cliche, but like I, I think it works. Yeah, I'm not really sure how the mirror plays into this and the setting of it. I'm not entirely sure exactly like what to think about this set itself. I, I mean, personally, the one of her in the snow was really striking, um, especially with how like the snow is framing her eyelids and eyebrows. And um, yeah, there, there are a lot of expression and action, especially with the snow falling through, which I think is uh, really effective. But with the ones of like the balloons, um, I, I, I'm kind of left more like not sure exactly what I'm looking at. And I, mm. And not much more than that. Um, okay. So I'm curious, like, what your thought was behind um, the props and stuff. I mean, you probably could just be having fun with it, which is totally cool. But just wanted to ask. The mirror comes from, I just, I like to use reflections a lot in my pictures. <laughs> That's a really major motif in my pictures, um, and um, I mean, that's hard. I mean, honestly, it's it's kind of, it is like pretty, this, like this shoot is pretty surface level. Like it's, you can interpret that as like something about like love or something. It's like there's a certain mel melancholy t um, sense to it. But I, melancholy love with her, like the hair, but there's really not, not much more, I would say. I liked all of your pictures, and I'll just be honest, except these two. These just two? Cause, yeah, just because just I don't like the mirror. Really? Like, it just seems cheesy. <laughs> but really? everything else I love, hey, like, okay. just these two, like, I'm not a fan of the mirror. Huh. Interesting, because yeah. I, I mean, I'm a little more indifferent about these, but I do actually like this one, because the fact that this is a love seat, and then mm, I, I like to, I like to play, I like to play with like puns sometimes in my pictures, because so it's a love seat, and then I put a, I put like a balloon, heart shaped balloon in the middle. I mean, okay, it's like it's like a one line joke, but. <laughs> I got it. That's good. That's good. That's okay. Like, more, I feel like it's more of like an idea, many ideas in development. At first, when I saw it, I thought the series was kind of like the heart, but like it's yeah. set in like a really cold environment, and she doesn't look very like uh, the way her expression is. It's pretty like solemn, I yeah. guess. It does remind me of uh, Kanye West's famous breakup album, 808. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> if you check out the album cover, is that heart balloon um, yeah, in the right. background? So uh, it it just gave me chills of like solemnness. But I feel like maybe um, it could be composed and developed further and better. But if this was mm. more of like just a Wednesday shoot for you, then um, so be it. An idea, an idea explored. And uh, I would add uh, if yeah. I. The, the the second shot with the mirror on the couch, um, I would have yeah. probably gone in with my uh, mad Photoshop skills and probably had taken the flower pot out. It was just basically red, I, red, yeah, white. But yeah, you don't I definitely wanted to go in there and look at it. To see. I definitely wanted. I definitely wanted to do that. Yeah, but then I was like, that's way too complicated. Yeah, <laughs> taking out that flower pot would be a lot uh, of work. And <laughs> send it to me. I'll, I'll have it completed in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I love all your work, as you know, Mike. So kudos to everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I like. I mean, I like the fact that there's like a barge barcode right here like for something i don't know it's it's yeah, yeah it's it's not it's not very deep don't 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 overlook into it mm. uh thanks see. for sharing these though i mean i think it's yeah. really yeah it's a lot of good work 
Um, the black and white portraits, I think, were really strong, too. I think this one's my favorite. Oh, if you go back to the two <laughs> people, this one's my favorite of yours, I think. I, yeah. This one's great. Yeah. yeah, this, I mean, the framing <laughs> it on this one is really, I yeah. wish, I do wish, like, it wasn't the, feel, uh, the different feel wasn't, like, so much, but it was, like, so dark. I had to shoot yeah, it one more. Right, yeah. This is, like, at, like, 12, like, at 1 or 12, 8, like, either 12 or at 1 a.m., so. Mm -hmm. You yeah, I'm that finding weird. that out in the winter time too, and yeah. especially in the dark. Yeah, everything is all wide open, and it's frustrating. Was your DSLR struggling to get into focus? It did that. Uh, zoop, zoop, zoop. I want to say I used manual focus for these. Good call. Yeah. I mean, but I saw I saw the I saw this guy says sweatshirt first, and I was like, this would be like great like i i was just trying to get like honestly I, I wasn't even trying to get like both of them in i thought like even if i just got like one side in there with this mm -hmm. like as the front uh as the foreground would be great for like getting two of them which is like really that was really awesome were you shooting uh some square format or uh, no, did no, you crop I, it? I, cro I cropped it to make it i mean it just it just doesn't look as uh I want to say actually like, yeah, it just doesn't work as well if I, without the crop. Gotcha. Yeah, I would like to see more of the, um, the uh, protester and the police guy, um, just in my personal preference, but, mm. uh, but that police looks like Jason Statham. <laughs> 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 but yeah, very, very great composition. Interesting composition. My favorites were the uh, lady on the ground, with the pink dress, and the traffic cone photos. Uh, the traffic mm -hmm. cone photos, like that, like that, like type of like conceptual shit, is like my yeah. bread and butter. So I really like, <laughs> so I really like the fact that you have that in the in here. It's pretty cool. You should uh, get enough shots to do a coffee table book, Mike. Like a, <laughs> I, that, yeah. Well, so, or at least like a portfolio yeah. to like apply to art school with, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a on, good ongoing project. Yeah, I I was talking to a photographer just earlier to no yesterday actually. So um, we were talking about like applying to art school, and she mm -hmm. said I should I should focus on that series. Yeah, so, I already told you how much I like this photograph. Yeah, I also really like this one. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think uh, if. Anyone else has anything left to say? Um, I'd like to close it for yeah. now. Um, I, I would like to add, I think I'll add the links to the um, group chat, but I think Leica Store and I think DCSPC or Street Photography Group Collective is having submissions for any photos taken in 2020. Um, and I think it comes with prizes too, especially with the Leica Store. So if even, you guys- Even I, if I don't use the Leica? Even if you don't use a Leica, I'm not sure what the criteria are, but it's worth checking out. And I'll include the link there too. So, <laughs> yeah, even if we use Fuji film, <laughs> yeah, even if you use like an iPhone, you know, the cheap, I think poor man's Leica. <laughs> they're looking for any shots in 2020, I think. So, I think it's a good transition from this meetup to give a shout out to to those photo contests. Let's see if you guys want to submit. But thank you so much for yeah. joining in this evening. And I, I know it lasted longer than we all expected, but I think we had some great conversations from it. Um, thank you so much for you guys for joining. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking forward to having you here. Yeah, so. for sure. Keep in touch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Touch. thanks for having thanks us. Having thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye.